Shabbat Kodesh. I'm Achal Kazayu. Welcome. Got to excuse me. Uh, I'm a little uh, woozy under the weather. And no, it's not no COVID. <laughs> let's let's get that out the way. We're not going out this morning with that, you know. So just bear with me. We like to always try to come with an open mission and a closing one. Hallelujah. Baruch Atai Adonai Elahanu Malaka Haolam. Yeshua Natan Lanu Ed Derek. Hey Yeshua, the Messiah. Yeshua. Baruch Hu. Amen. Today I want to talk to you all about being born again. Uh, I know it's been traditionally known to to say that we have been born again when we feel that we've been renewed by the Holy Spirit. When we feel that we've been converted, we've been saved by Yahweh. Being under the blood of Jesus. And, and oh, I know I've been born again. I feel the difference in my life. And, and I was once like that too. So that's why I can't sit here and judge or condemn one another. I'm here to teach the truth. Um, even some leaders out there that speak the truth. They still lack somewhat wisdom and understanding enough to say I'm born again as well. I just was taught myself this year on what it means to be born again. I've made comments on YouTube about explaining how we are born again. And I've received backlash, negative feedback about being born again. They throw scripture, but they misunderstood the scripture that they throw back at me. And so that's the reason why I feel that I need to make a video on my channel speaking about being born again. Hallelujah. You must be born again. What that mean? Today is December 24th, 2020. I'm still, like I said, learning how to come across when people even say happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Right now, all I could come up with is, you know, likewise or, you know, uh, have a blessed day. Hava, a hava, you know, I don't celebrate holidays. And they always come back, oh, I don't celebrate it either. I don't, I don't do it either. But you just said happy holiday. You just said Merry Christmas. <laughs> you, 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 you buy gifts. But yet. You say at the same time you don't celebrate holidays. So I need to continue to ask Elohim on how to respond to those who wishes me a, a happy holiday, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Easter, and stuff like that. Because I don't know the exact words to come back when someone says that to me because I don't do pagan holidays. It's another subject, but just throwing it out there because it is... December 24th, 2020. What God created at the time described in the first chapter of Genesis was a physical creation. <clears throat> Man made of the dust of the ground was the material being that God planned to mold, shape, and form into a perfect spiritual creation. He pictures us as the clay and himself as the master potter forming us into the spiritual image of himself. <sighs> Ooh, hot. Okay. Human reproduction is a type of the process by which God is reproducing himself. Okay, I try to explain this the best way I can to people. 
It's like when a mother, okay, the father and plants the sperm in the mother's womb and, and it goes to the ovum. <clears throat> now, that's like the Holy Spirit in us. The sperm is, the Holy Spirit is the sperm that comes within us. Okay? So, as the baby in the mother womb is developing, that's us developing. What the Holy Spirit is, is in us is helping us develop spiritually on this earth. Getting us prepared. Getting us ready to become born again. Hallelujah. I'm trying to break it down for, for people's elementary understanding. Because that's how I was able to understand it. When things is, is, is explained for you you're not for for people to not understand it for some reason people see that 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 makes sense but if you don't understand how do it make sense hallelujah no you want people to break things down for your understanding whether it's elementary or uh uh advanced level expert level whatever level you at i try i tell people at times uh i don't understand that expert level bring it down a notch Cause right now I'm at the elementary stage. I need you to break it down. If you at that stage, bring it down a notch, so I can have some understanding. Cause it don't make sense to me. I don't care what words you use and hypotheses, mythicists, and and, and theologists and theology. I don't care about none of that. I don't understand you, so it means nothing to my spirit. It means nothing to my mind. So that's why I'm trying to break it down for those who need who can understand it. Okay, so like I said, the Holy Spirit is implanted in us once we receive the Holy Spirit. It's like the sperm enter into a mother's womb. And so therefore, let me see. Each human since Adam and Eve started from a tiny ovum, the size of a pinpoint produced in the body of the mother. But the ovum is incomplete of itself. According to some authorities, its lifespan is only about 48 hours. Unless fertilized by the sperm cell from the human father within the limited time, it dies. A new human life can begin only when that sperm cell impregnates, enters the ovum. Spiritually speaking, each human mind is like an ovum. When we're made to need the impregnating spiritual life of God's Holy Spirit. So we can be created in God's spiritual image and live forever. Huh? Do you understand that? The physical ovum, once it is fertilized, becomes a begotten human life called an embryo. <laughs> I try to explain this to people. Before I go any further, right now, as, as mortal beings on this earth, mortal beings, we are still sinful. We, st we still have sin within us. Not saying that we are... People that's of the truth are willing to sin, but we are still mortal beings. We become immortal when we, when we live in spirit with God, when we're resurrected. Right now, we're still mortal, so we can't be born again. Uh, we can't be born again unless we are immortal. I don't want to jump ahead, but right now, I try to tell people right now on this earth, as mortal beings, we are spiritual begotten children. We are spiritual begotten Christians. We are not born again yet. We are spiritual begotten Christians. When Jesus was here on earth with the 12 disciples and everybody else helping and healing them, he was his only begotten son at that time. Jesus was his begotten son. Jesus was not born again until he was rose and resurrected on that third day. When he was risen on the third day and he was swooped up to heaven with Elohim, he, he was born again. Huh? That's why he said, my only begotten son. He 
He was his begotten son while he was on earth. And that's what we are. Once we receive the Holy Spirit, we are his begotten children. We become born again later. So we used to saying that because it's been traditionally implanted in us to say that. But that's not true. And when I try to speak that and teach that after I've received the knowledge, I'm happy to share it with the other people and everybody studies shunning it all because they don't want to get that knowledge. They don't want to be broad and they don't want to say, oh, okay, thank God that I've received the truth now. They want to still live in a, in a pagan traditional era. But how are, you going, how are you growing if you're not willing to learn? You can't just accept one thing traditionally and then, boom, I'm not willing to learn anything else that Elohim shares with me. I'm good. I don't want it. But see, that's how Satan gets us with these lies. You don't just receive something, then boom, that's it. And then when someone come on later on in life, give you the truth, you just shine them off. I don't want to learn that. I, I'm sticking with what I know for years. And my grandma and my auntie and them, they said it. I, I'm, I'm saying it. But it's a lie. You've been lied to. We all been lied to with saying we've been born again. <laughs> it's impossible. And not only that. But if you understood that, you definitely wouldn't say it because why would you claim you born again in this wicked world of Satan? Hallelujah. Now that I've received it, it makes sense. Why, why would I say I'm born again in this world? Not at all. No, no, I'm not born again in this wickedness. I'm right now being the developed to become part of God's kingdom, his family, with Abraham and them. So, yeah, you know, go back. The physical ovum, once it is fertilized, becomes a begotten human life called an embryo. A number of weeks following conception... The embryo develops into what is called a fetus. Come on, y'all. Stay with me. The mother's womb nourishes and protects it. Listen to what I'm saying. Carrying it in that part of her body where she may best protect it from harm. Until it has grown enough to be born. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to listen to what I'm saying on how this is being developed as a physical part of life. Everything that I'm saying, now think of it spiritually. On how Elohim is protecting us once we... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mother takes care of her fetus before it's born, developing it and giving it all the nourishments to make sure it's nice and healthy. That's what goes on with us, the spiritual begotten Christians of Elohim. Once we stay within the truth of Elohim by obeying him, staying in his word, praying, fasting, doing his fruits, not arguing, not disputing. Being of contention and, and, and nonsense. He nourishes us. He protects us. He blesses us. He continuously feeds us with wisdom, knowledge, understand the true revelation of his word until we are born again. Now that's speaking from a spiritual view. Hallelujah. In order for us to get some wisdom, we must be wise enough to open our minds and listen to the truth that has been brought to us. When you turn your ear away from it, you don't want to listen. So therefore, you're going to stay ignorant of the truth, of knowledge, of wisdom, of understanding. And when someone come across you with the truth and you don't know because you was willing not to know, your results of not knowing is anger because you don't know. 
So you think you know because you shunned it off and now you're mad because someone has come at you and proved your ignorance. So that's what produces contention towards others when we speak the truth to people. They mad because they they sense it's true. They know it's true and they feel more of like of a shame within themselves because they don't know the truth. They think they know, but they don't know. And they can't prove what they think they know. They can't prove evidence of it being truth. I, I'm, I'll go way over there with this. You have to listen. Let he who have ears what? Hear. You turning it off. You, you, I'm going to the next video. You're going to the next page. You ain't trying to hear it. Well, that's on you. I'm trying to tell you, you study speaking false. Why would you want to keep speaking false? <laughs> I was glad to receive the truth. I felt stupid when I was saying, I'm like, whoa, because I didn't know. But now I know. Yeah. Likewise, God's church protects and spiritually feeds spirit begotten Christians with the word of God so they may grow spiritually. Second Peter chapter 3, 18. In the divine character of God. But there is one great difference in this analogy. The human fetus does not attain physical and, and uh, mental maturity before birth. However, the spirit begotten Christian must attain a measure of spiritual maturity before he or she is spirit born at the resurrection. The newborn physical babes main growth occurs after birth. But spiritual growth in Christians occurs before their spiritual birth. <laughs> First Peter chapter two one two. See, it's it's a slight difference because physical the baby is not growing until they are born. Spiritually, we have to grow first before we are born. Because when we are born, that's when we are born into the new family of God when we're resurrected. You can't be born again. You can't be accepted into the new kingdom unless you have developed a great spiritual knowledge of God. Until you re oh, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, you have to understand the truth. It's, it's, it's nothing else to even say about that. You can't distort the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we are born again, born of God. Changed into spirit beings as the re at the resurrection. We will look essentially as we do now. But our resurrected bodies will be different bodies composed of spirit instead of flesh and blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 35-44. Look it up. Our faces will shine with the brilliance of the sun in full strength as does Christ. Revelation 1, 16. Now, what exactly is the spiritual growth that is so necessary before being born again? Is it spiritual character? It is spiritual character development. It is spiritual character development. Point blank. Point blank. It is a spiritual character development. I just said that you have to read your Bibles. You have to teach his word. You have to go out and serve for Elohim. Become an ambassador for Christ. Stop all the wrongdoing. Stop sinning. If you can help it, stop it. The things that you can't help doing, pray to stop it. You got to want to stop it because you need to stop it. You know, I already spoke about you won't inherit the kingdom when you do these such things. It is spiritual character. Now, character development is all capitalized letters with an exclamation point at the end. So that's, that's how serious it is. You have to develop a spiritual character of yourself. 
What sense do that make if you smoking weed and kicking and lusting and committing adultery, fornicating and, and shacking up, cussing and can on, shooting, killing, stealing, robbing, uh, a jeal full of jealousy, envy, hate, bitterness, full of lies, being deceitful, all that, and you and you feel that you can go to heaven. Dore Love asked one of the, the, the Hebrew Israelites, did they have the Holy Spirit in them? The brother answered, he's not going to say yes, he have it, or no, he has it. What type of answer is that, folks? Let me tell y'all something. When someone asked me years ago, was I sure if I was going to heaven? I said, I did not know. When you ask, well, when you answer questions like that, that means that you don't have neither Holy Spirit in you. Satan is the author of confusion, not Yahweh, not Yeshua. It's either you know or you don't know. It's either you know you're going to go to heaven or you know you're not going to go to heaven. It's either you know you feel with the Holy Spirit or you not feel with the Holy Spirit. It's not no, I ain't going to answer, I do, and I ain't going to answer. What are you talking about? If you all are out there speaking and trying to teach one another of the Bible or the truth, it's a simple question. It's a simple answer he should receive, right? Do you have the Holy Spirit in you? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? If you know you feel with the Holy Spirit, you should be glad to tell someone, yes, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. If you know you have your name in the book of life, you should be glad to tell someone, yes, I know, I know my name is in the book of life. I know I will be part of the first resurrection. Huh? It's not going to be, I don't know. I can't, let me get back at y'all on that one. Uh... I have no idea. Oh, I can't even ask that. You know, I ain't going to ask it. Yes, I do. Yet. Come on. No. See, that. See, this is what I'm talking. This is Satan creeping in there. And you all out here boldly. Don't talk about the Israel, the Hebrew Israelites, the, the cats out there that try to look intimidating and try to. They, they, come, don't not disciples of Christ. Yeshua didn't have his disciples with him rolling around trying to look intimidating like a game banger. And look like gang members and trying to be enforceful and, 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 and no, get out of your spirit is off off track, period. Point blank. Your spirit is off, first of all. And then if you out there speaking the word, trying to demand someone to know what you speaking, and especially if you're not under the new covenant, because he's he also stated that he wasn't under the new covenant. They still uh rather believe and teach the old testament, the Tanakh. So, if you're not even under the new covenant, if you don't even read the new testament, you don't believe in it, you haven't even accepted Yeshua as your Savior. You haven't even accepted Him. So, no, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. No, you're not sure if you're going to go to heaven. No, you're not because you don't even, you just, you don't even, you don't even read the new testament. You don't believe in it. Or something he says, like, come on. They, uh, uh, not Dore Love, but David Lynn. David Lynn was like, my brother, my brother. Oh, I'm, I'm under the new covenant. I have been saved. I have been delivered. I've received salvation. What are you talking about? You don't even acknowledge that, my brother. So no wonder why you couldn't answer if you knew if you received the Holy Spirit or not. No wonder. And you want me to listen to you teach the, the, the Torah, teach the Bible? You going around here, you got you or you got your buddy speaking loud through the words, and you not even none of y'all are sure if you're gonna receive is receive eternal life. None of y'all. How dare you? You don't know if you're born again, if you're gonna be born again, you don't believe you'll be born again, and you're arguing about how Mary gave birth to J. I, I don't deal with folk like that. I may listen to see how ignorant people are and see when they're going to come out of the ignorance, but I don't I don't have time for that. That's why I thank God that I can have my own channel and go from there. So, yeah, uh, it is spiritual character development that we must have, people. Such character is the ability as a free mortal agent. 
to discern right from wrong. Hallelujah. The true values from the false truth from error and then to make the right choice or decision <laughs> even against self-desire impulse or temptation plus the will and the self-discipline to resist the wrong and to do the right which is obedience to God's law of love such spiritual character development is possible only Throughout feeding on the word of God and Bible study. Through prayer. Obedience to God. And wholehearted participation in the work of God's church. Now. This is, this is uh, in parentheses. The subject of spiritual growth and character development will be covered in much greater detail in upcoming, in upcoming lessons. Now, the churches. You have to ask Elohim where to send you or where you should have church. Because the you got a lot of denominational churches out there that's full of lies and deceits. That's why I like, I like to read Revelation uh, 2 and 3 chapters, you know. He understand why we may not go to a specific group of people that go to the, these building churches out here. I have church amongst myself. You know, I have church amongst myself with Elohim, you know, through Yeshua. And I feel great. My spirit is complete about it, and that's that. I try all type of different churches and didn't feel it at all. My spirit was not right. So what this is saying, you must have a sacred service. You must have sacred service. You must have a time out every day, weekly, or whatever, you know, serving uh, 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 Yahweh. You know, that's how you learn. That's how you get closer to him. This is, this, it says, development is possible only through feeding on the word of God. Bible study, praying, obedience, church, you know, stuff like that. So you have to do that. You can't just say, okay, come into my life and then going back out there, go kick the bobos. Go do what you want to do. Go car drag racing and... And go to these strip clubs and stuff like that, flashing money and think, oh, I'm good. I get God got my back. I'm good. I'm I'm spiritual. And then you, it's impossible. You can't do that. It's the only way we're gonna grow spiritually. So, you know, I just wanted to give y'all a brief explanation on being born again. I have a whole workbook on explaining on how being born again, and I would be. All day with this, you know what I'm saying. So I threw scripture at you all to to know, and maybe you can go further into details on how you are born again. But I'm here to let you all know: once you receive the Holy Spirit, you are not yet born again on earth. You have become spiritually begotten Christians of of Elohim. When you are born again, you are born again at resurrection. When you become part of the family, and you he he used the fetus, the baby, as an example physically to let you know how a baby is born into a family but before the baby is born it is developing it is developing getting ready to be part of a new family and that's how we are as true Christians of Elohim this is a cult Kazaya representing Shadrach Kodash I like to go with the closing Adonai Orivia Shi Mimi Ira Avenue Shabbat Shamayim Yekadash Shamka of Hava. Next time you all stay up and pass the word around. Ahava.